There's something that's been bugging me. Something I need to get off my chest. Mordenkainen and how Wizards of the Coast managed to mess up one of the most iconic D&D characters of all time. Now, Mordenkainen isn't just any wizard. He's practically a legend in the D&D universe, created by the Gary Gainax, the founder of D&D. Mordenkainen was his personal character over years. Mordenkainen then grew into sort of the most powerful, influential figures in the game's lore. Now, he wasn't your typical good guy or bad guy. No, Warden Kynan was all about balance. He believed in maintaining a kind of cosmic uh, equilibrium, where neither good nor evil, nor law nor chaos could dominate for too long. He also was kind of a prick, like most wizards. But yes, he was perhaps the first asshole wizard in archetype that would be repeated several times in the future. But he was the first, and that's to be respected. Unfortunately, Wizards of the Coast disrespected him and his legacy. How? Let's get to it. When Wizards of the Coast decided to bring Morden Kynan into 5th edition with an appearance in the one, the only, Curse of Strahd. This book had some absolutely amazing content for sure. It's known for being the best 5th edition book, but Mordenkainen's appearance in it felt like a strange addition. Now, what was Mordenkainen doing in this setting? The dread domain of Barovia, ruled by its overlord, Strahd von Zarovich. Was there an exploration of his moral dilemmas? Was there maybe hints into Oerth and how Barovia and Oerth might be connected in some way? Perhaps some inside into the Circle of Eight, a council of wizards that he was the leader of, or the cosmic balance he fought so hard to maintain? Eh, uh, not really. He's running around naked on a mountain, shooting lightning bolts into the sky every now and then. So, this kind of sucks. It, it sounds a bit funny, and it definitely is, but for Mordenkainen, it kind of just seems like a waste of character. So, pretty much, it's implied that Mordenkainen arrived in Barovia, somehow, and wanted to get out. So, what did he do? Study who Strahd von Zalovich was and his weaknesses? Play the smart and slow game of waiting for more adventurers or fellow mages to appear to be allies? No, instead he walked up to Castle uh, Ravenloft with an army of recruited peasants to besiege the castle. I would expect Mordenkainen's plan to be different than just the town drunk who has an issue with the noble lord, but as seen as it's written in the book, it wasn't. Now, the fight goes about as well as you'd expect. He loses the fight, and his staff and book gets lost in the process, and Strahd spares his life because it's way more funny to see him insane compared to dead. So this kinda sucks. Morden Gaiden is shoulder to shoulder with Elminster and being one of the oldest ass-kicking wizards in the Forgotten Realms, and yet he's treated like an idiot. Overconfidence under selling your enemy is the weakness of any wizard. Yes, trust me, I know. No, I've got a certain player who keeps reminding me of it, but my main issue with Mordenkainen and being here is that he can be replaced with any wizard. The Mad Mage of Mount Batok could be anybody. Their actions don't change the world in any substantial manner that only Mordenkainen could have done. Their personality during the insanity would be the same. Not only all of this, but for Mordenkainen, a guy who's fought for Vecna more times than anyone else doesn't even get his own stamp lock. Instead, He's given the generic Archmage stat block. Mordenkainen knows way more than anyone else when it comes to fighting big bats. And he knows, without a doubt, the number one thing you do not do is walk into a big bad's lair. And I mean, hey, castle on a hill, how more obvious of a lair can you get? And then fight him with an army of peasants. To remind you, this was Mordenkainen's first appearance in 5th edition. A whole host of new players who have never seen him before. And this is what they get. Mordenkainen felt more like an important name, slapped in the book, and that's it. But just a cameo. Now, this is only the first instance of something happening like this. And it only gets worse. Far worse. Let's close up the best book in 5th edition and open up the worst book as we begin our 
Galactus set him to a virus. Yeah, so this module is terrible for so many reasons. I might make a video on it later, but for right now, let's focus on what we're here to talk about. So, Descent into Avernus has a garbage plot of fetch quests. So to save your ears from the torture of me explaining everything, I'll summarize. Your party is in hell. What do you want to do? Beat up the big bad or turn them into good? Why are you wanting to do this? Is a city in hell you've never been to? It's falling down to the river sticks. Being in hell, you want to make allies. And you've heard that there is a tower that lies within a lake. Inside that tower is a powerful mage who is Morden Kynan. You make your way to the tower where a master of the multiverse uses to travel through all the worlds and your party speaks with a simulacra, basically a copy of him, a clone, and explain everything to him. Hell is reaping cities from the terrible plane. The demons, or rather the devils, are close to winning the eternal war with the demons. And all of the balance of the universe could be shifted in this conflict. And you ask him, what do we do? And how does he respond? He ignores the situation, saying the balance will be maintained. A direct quote from the book, before sending them off on a side quest unrelated to the crisis at hand. Now, is Morden Kaiden supposed to be a prick? Absolutely, but he's supposed to care about the balance of the universe. Him saying the universe will sort itself out doesn't really make sense considering he's witnessed universes get unraveled and destroyed firsthand. Whether it's Ayus or Vecna causing havoc, he always rises to the challenge to stop them, oftentimes getting the help of several adventurers. And hey, that's what second and third edition adventures were all about. And yet, it's basically ignored. With Curse of Strahd, we had a situation where he could be replaced by any other wizard in the entire game and it would make just about as much sense. Meanwhile, in this situation, we have a case where he is not acting like himself at all, whatsoever. In fact, I'd even call it character assassination. He's directly telling the players he doesn't care about the crisis when in every other edition he's been in, he's been doing things to stop crises like this. So not only in his first module, he sucks, in his second module, he's even worse. But before we handle his last appearance, we should address a counter-argument for these first two appearances. Big thing in D&D is making sure the players feel like they are forces in the world that are making impacts, and there are many things that can cause issues with this. One of the largest ones is having other NPCs who can basically replace the players without any real problem, or otherwise can make any difficulty for the players seem minute and irrelevant, making then the players in their own struggles feel irrelevant as a result. Now to ensure that no new DMs fall into the pitfall of this issue, I can understand them adding some precautions, some sort of barriers where this won't be a problem, where Mordenkainen's not going to solo Strahd or solo whatever the heck or main villain of Avernus is. I've tried to forget it, to be honest. Azariel, that's her name. But there are far better ways to prevent this. Far better, far more simple, really. And, well, it doesn't even take a experienced DM to think of any. Oh, and not to mention, of course, uh, with the closing of Descent to Avernus, uh, and moving on to the last uh, book he appears in. Uh, in Avernus, he also doesn't get a stat block. Yes, uh, legendary wizard sends... First edition ever. Still doesn't have a stat block. Nice. All right, well, let's continue forth to the last module of, really, fifth edition itself. And the last module more than Kynan is, well, you'll see. As we enter Vecna, Eve of Ruin. So this module was one that was supposed to combine everything in 5th edition, all of the adventures, all the models, characters, villains, everything. Combine them all and basically be a large lead up to fighting Vecna. Did it achieve this? Debatably. But we're going to focus on our boy, Morton Kynan. He appears in this one and I, for one, got very excited. So let me give you the synopsis. Morton Kynan, Tasha, 
and Laredo Silverhand have teamed up to make a wish spell to defeat Vecna with a combined power of all of their magics. Now, unfortunately it seems this wish spell does not work, but instead it summons your party practically, as you then go forth to try and stop Vecna with the assistance of all three of the powerful mages. Now here's when we get to the problem. First, I'll tell you what I was thinking when I was reading Marshall. I was like, I want to see Mordenkai in the stat book. Let me open up this book as I uh, look through it and uh, it, it's not here. That's a bit weird. Uh, Lariel's stat book's here. Tasha's stat book's here. But where's Mordenkai? Kindness. So I peered through the book when I found the revelation. Now, if you plan on running this module as a player, leave the video now and do please drop a like and subscribe. But I just do want to preface, we're about to enter some spoilers because this book is substantially newer than the other, so I want to at least give a warning first. Now, the revelation is Mordenkainen actually isn't in the book. Instead, it is Kaas, the betrayer, basically Vecna's arch rival. So, at first glance, this seems interesting. So I was thinking to myself, okay, so we've got a sort of God of War, Tyr Odin situation. All right, I, I can work with that. Um, where exactly is Mordenkainen? He's uh, screwing around in the multiverse. Okay, well, uh, when does he appear in the module? I read through more of the book. Uh, he doesn't appear at all. This is absolutely stupid. Why is Mordenkainen being slammed onto this book just to not even be in it in the first place? And don't get me started on how ridiculous Kaz somehow is masquerading as Mordenkainen and whatnot. He's with these two strong mages, some of the strongest mages in all of the universe. And because he has like a crown that's called like the crown of lies and deception or something stupid, he can just masquerade as Mordenkainen. Now, is this crown like important plot wise? Do they have any hints that it exists and someone has it? Uh, maybe you could throw in hints and Mordenkainen isn't who he says? Uh, no. Uh, in fact, no on both accounts. There's no hints about this crown of lies. Uh, that Kaz is wearing, and there's no at all even possibility of you not believing Mordenkainen. Want to know why? Let's read the crown, shall we? While in your disguised form, any lies you tell always seem true, no matter what magical or mundane methods are used to try and detect your falsehood. The only way to reveal your true nature while transformed by the crown is via a wish spell. So there are so many reasons this was just not the choice to make, but I want to focus on just a very simple one. Bornkainen, like we've gone over before, he's one of the oldest characters in the series. They've really tried to, in recent books and modules, place a focus on him being the multiverse guy. Whenever there's something like multiverse, a universe, Universe related, he's the guy you want to go to. They even released a book that was like Mordenkainen's, I think it was Monsters of the Multiverse or was something. I'll put it on the screen right now. But they put his face on these books, and despite it all, they seem to just throw away his character in every single appearance he has, which makes me just try and think as to why. Which makes me sort of think that this isn't just about Mordenkainen, it's sort of about Gygax himself too. Mordenkainen and Gygax are remnants of an older age of D&D. Lately, D&D has become more mainstream. There's been a tendency to simplify and streamline things, sometimes at the expense of the game's depth. Characters like Morton Kynan embodied the complexity, the richness, and sort of the history of D&D itself. But all of that is now just being reduced to footnotes and a face to put on a cover of books to sell them. Fifth edition has done a lot for D&D. It's brought in countless new players, and made the game more popular than ever. But I believe in the rush to make D&D a household name, some 
of the game's most iconic characters are just getting lost in the shuffle. One kind of deserved better. He's a character with legacy that goes back to the very roots of the game itself. And that legacy is worth preserving. Gary Gygax's work should be preserved, not overwritten by whatever modern day D&D folks are putting to the pages. So as we look to the future of D&D, it's worth taking a moment to remember what made characters like Mordenkainen so great in the first place. It's not just about their power or their place in the lore, but it was about the depth and complexity they brought to the game. And to see a character like this just shafted in such a way, well, it makes me think that D&D loses something essential. And that's just the idea that, hey, some guy way long ago, in the olden days of 1970, made a character in one game that's appeared in countless other peoples, making themselves more of a character in a world than a character on paper. I can't really think of anything more D&D than that. But hopefully in newer editions and in one D&D and whatever new books that get made from those, Mordenkainen gets a more fair shake. I guess we'll have to see. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope that you enjoy my other videos.